you like fast answers, you're going to love this. Rather than force you to watch the entire video, I'm going to give you all the answers that you came for up front in the first two minutes. And then if you want to listen to the reasoning behind that, you can watch the rest of the video. Today is January 16th, and since we've had snow and freezing temps this week in Franklin, Tennessee, I thought I'd change up the view for this special outlook on housing and interest rates for 2024. Here's the bottom line. When people are confused, it's hard to make decisions. They become fearful, and this creates huge opportunities for those who understand what's happening. In the next few minutes, I'm going to help you find clarity in the residential real estate and mortgage interest rate markets. Whether you're a home buyer, a current homeowner, a real estate agent, or a financial advisor trying to help your clients navigate today's world. My name's Mike Castronovo, and for over 30 years, I've been successfully advising some of the wealthiest families and individuals in America, but today I'm here to help you. So as promised, here are the answers. Number one, housing prices are about to skyrocket. Number two, interest rates are going to fall, but not as fast as many have been predicting. And a couple of bonus answers for you. Number three, despite all the doom and gloom forecasts, America will survive. And number four, what if I'm wrong? Well, then Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum will be right. And by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. But I don't think that's going to happen either. So here's my personal advice. If you're not currently living in the home that you want to live in forever, then you need to buy your next home or your first home as soon as possible. If there's one thing that I can say with an extremely high degree of certainty, it's that home prices will continue to rise this year as well as for the next several years to come. It will not be cheaper to buy a home in the future. Now, there is a caveat here that you could see a flash crash. This is when there's a sudden and sharp crash and then an immediate rebound afterwards. Being able to capitalize on this would be like trying to catch a falling knife. Now, aside from having a better shot at winning the lottery, if and when this were to happen, unless you have the ability to pay cash, you're not going to be able to get financing because the markets would temporarily freeze and banks will stop lending. My next piece of personal advice is to eliminate your debt, including your mortgage, while increasing your investable assets. There is a product out there that if you can qualify, you can cut your interest expense in half without changing your current spending habits. You must have great credit great income relative to your expenses, and it's available on loan amounts up to $3 million. Now, you can use this tool to knock out all your debt, including second homes and investment properties. Okay, so why do I boldly say all this, and why should you even listen to me or even pay attention to what I'm saying? Quick background on me. I spent the first part of my career on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME where I still hold the record as being the youngest member in the 126 year history. For seven years in a row, I ran the largest institutional trading desk for short-term interest rate options on futures in the world. I was truly blessed to have many of the biggest banks and hedge funds as clients and mentors. They trusted my reputation for being highly accurate in predicting interest rates, both short and long-term. In this video, I wanna help you. My goal is to give you a clear perspective on U.S. housing and interest rates in 2024 and beyond, so you can make wise decisions with your personal real estate, as well as helping guide the real estate decisions of your clients. There's never an easy time to predict the market. Even during years of relative stability, there are always several pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. However, this year, in 2024, it's like somebody took a thousand-piece puzzle, dumped it on the table, turned all the pieces upside down, and said you've got an hour to figure it out. This is by far the most difficult market to forecast in over 40 years. My lawyers want me to remind you that this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. Don't you just hate when you have to throw that BS in there? I know I do. I'm going to tell you exactly how I see it and how I would advise my family and friends. I'm not going to hold anything back. The U.S. and global political environment is a major wild card this year. I will tell you the facts, and that may offend some of you. I strongly urge you not to allow your social views to overshadow your financial perspective. I've never shied away from delivering bad news, and I will not sugarcoat the market and tell you it's all going to be a bed of roses. But I will tell you to stick around to the end that there is a happy ending, and you can prosper if you know what to expect. 
Here are the things that I'll answer in this video. Should I be buying real estate today? When is the best time to buy? And when will rates hit their lows? Every day we deal with information overload and a confused mind is unlikely to act. Therefore, my job is to help you gain clarity. In order to do that, I'm going to provide you with perspective so that when you see and hear the things that are coming this year, they don't hit you unexpectedly. Everywhere you look, you're almost certain to find predictions of financial doom, a housing bubble, a debt crisis, economic collapse, government shutdowns, energy crisis, a commercial real estate collapse, rising unemployment and layoffs related to AI, supply chain and food shortages, oil and gas prices, inflation, hyperinflation and stagflation, pandemics, U.S. elections, global elections, geopolitical risks, and wars. Just reading that list can be depressing, but trust me, don't tune out. Do not be held captive to fear. It's too easy to allow ourselves to remain confused and frozen in place. You want to be awake and not woke in order to prosper in the days ahead. Let me try my best to simplify the big pieces that you came here for. Number one, housing prices will go up. The biggest reasons are the shortage of supply and the pent-up demand that has been caused by recent high rates. A quick look at this chart shows the housing units available relative to population demand in the U.S. for the past 40 years. As you can see, for the past couple of years, we have been at all-time lows. Part of this is due to the pandemic and the shutdowns that caused a slowdown in new construction, but the second piece of it is the surge in population growth. We are currently at a shortage of 3.2 million homes in the U.S. A big piece of this is the millennials and Gen Z coming up right behind them. Millennials who were born between 1981 and 1996 are ages 28 to 43. They number 72.1 million as of 2019. And Gen X, born between 1965 and 1980, are from ages 44 to 59, are only 65.2 million. Gen X is projected to pass baby boomers in population by 2028. Now, when you look at this chart for population by age, you're going to see that the largest portion of that, the largest year, turns 34 this year. The average first-time homebuyer in the U.S., according to the National Association of Realtors, is 36. And as you can see, there's no major slowdown coming behind that. Bottom line, supply and demand. And it's not going away anytime soon. Construction costs are too high currently due to inflation. Rents are also going up as well. And there's huge pent-up demand. As interest rates started to rise over the past two years, fewer and fewer people were able to qualify to purchase the homes they wanted. However, as rates start to drop, for every one quarter percent that the Fed cuts, you can likely expect to see home prices rise 1% on a national average. That means if the Fed cuts four times this year as being predicted, they cut rates 1%, you're going to see home prices go up by 4%. That means if the Fed cuts rates a quarter percent four times this year on a $400,000 home with 3% down, you could save $264 a month by waiting for that lower rate. That's a little over $3,100 a year. However, you're going to pay $16,000 more for that same home, which means you'll need a bigger down payment and your mortgage balance will be higher and you'll really only save $162 a month or just a bit over $1,900 a year. In other words, it would take you eight years to break even on your savings on the lower interest rate versus the price that you're going to pay for the home. But that's forgetting about the fact that you'll be able to refinance. So the only result of waiting is that you'll lose money. Big piece of the puzzle number two, mortgage interest rates will drop. Now, this one is a little trickier. And here's why I'm saying that it will not happen as fast as many people are predicting. However, they will go lower than what most people are predicting. Bold claim. Here's why. First, there's a big difference between what the Fed should do and what the Fed will do 
in an election year. Inflation is alive and well. I call it the elusive recession. The Fed's job is to keep balance. You don't want inflation that's out of control, and you don't want a recession. So for everyone expecting the Fed to cut rates, they have a bit of a dilemma. The official story from our government leaders is, we're not in a recession. So how can they justify cutting interest rates? Now, mortgage rates have already dropped a little bit over a percent since the end of October. And much of that came after the last Fed meeting when Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, announced that the Fed was done raising rates. So the market adjusted. The free market pulled back rates on long-term expectations, but the Fed hasn't started to cut rates as of yet. Now look at the stock market. It's trading at all-time highs. If the economy were slowing and heading into a recession, then it should be heading down, right? The stock market is forward-looking. It typically looks forward six to nine months. So if we were heading into an environment where there was going to be a recession and that the Fed needs to start cutting rates in order to boost the economy, stocks should be heading down right now. But they're not. Now, this is a chart of the S&P 500 index, a chart of 500 of the top stocks in the U.S. But there's seven stocks called the Magnificent Seven, which are Amazon, Apple, Google Parent, Alphabet, Facebook Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla that are outperforming the index. And those seven stocks are largely responsible for driving the entire S&P 500 index to all-time highs. And while we're looking at charts in the market, I'm also going to pull up this chart on DR Horton, the major home builder in the U.S. Now, you see they've been going up. Now, a piece of interesting information about DR Horton is that Warren Buffett came in and announced at the end of the third quarter last year that he had been buying major amounts of stock in the company. That has to be reported when you start becoming a large shareholder. Now, Warren Buffett is known for his long-term buy and hold strategies. He did not buy this stock two years ago when it was trading down at the $50 level. He was buying it at the end of last year when it was trading over 100, and it's now at 153. Warren Buffett is making a long-term bet that DR Horton, the major home builder, is going to see a rise in their stock value. And that's because Warren Buffett believes the price of real estate is going up. So why does the stock market continue to rally if we're heading into a recession? The answer is the unprecedented amount of money that we've been printing and the out of control spending by our government. Take a look at this chart. Now, for purposes of this video, I want to try to remain as politically neutral as possible, but you look at the amount of money that the U.S. is spending, for example, on Ukraine. As of the end of October 2023, it was a total of $75.4 billion. Out of that, only $2.7 billion was going to humanitarian causes. Over $46 billion was going to military. Now, that $46 billion in military aid is not being sent over to Ukraine for them to go shopping for equipment. That money is being sent to U.S. corporations to produce military weapons and ammunition that gets shipped over to Ukraine. In other words, the money stays here in the U.S. And that's just one easy-to-cite example of where U.S. spending is going and who it's benefiting. The next question is, what would typically be the signs of a recession? What economists typically look at to predict a recession is what they call an inverted yield curve. And as you'll see in a moment, this is why I call it the elusive recession. You see, this chart here shows a normal U.S. Treasury yield curve. It shows what interest rates are at one month, two months, three months, going out to one year, two years, three years, five, 10, 20, 30 years. Now, as you go out farther and farther, when I'm lending you money, I'm going to charge you a higher interest rate. The shorter term you want to borrow, the lower the rate should be. That makes common sense. That makes logic. Now, this is what the market looked like just three years ago. When we look at the market today on the yield curve, you see something completely different. That short-term money, one month overnight, the overnight, the one month, two month, three month money, that's trading significantly higher than money that's being lent for three, five, seven years. Blips up a little bit at the 20 and 30 year mark, but still significantly lower than short term. That's known as an inverted yield curve. And why that's important is that historically, 
every time you see an inverted yield curve, it's predicted a recession. In fact, this chart here shows that the inverted yield curve has successfully predicted the past seven recessions. And if I had a chart that went back further to the 1940s, you would see that it predicted 11 recessions. So what about economic news? This is where you really need to dig down deep to find the truth. Much of the economic news that we are fed is bill shut. Wait, did I just change up the I and the U there? For example, the biggest numbers that the market looks at are the CPI and PPI, the consumer price index and producer price index, as well as the monthly employment figures. Those three major numbers are put out by the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and the U.S. Census Bureau, which is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Those agencies are always led by figures who have been appointed by the current administration. And it doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democrat, every administration leans upon these leaders to make their story look good. Let me give you one quick recent example. Here's a look at the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics' most recent numbers from Friday, January 5th, 2024. Now, when this came out, it showed total non-farm payroll employment increased by 216,000 in December. That was a great number. That was better than expected. However, when you scroll down, and I believe it's 26 paragraphs all the way to the very bottom here, you'll see that the change in total non-farm payroll for employment for October was revised down by 45,000 from 150,000 to 105,000. So basically a 50% drop. And the change for November was revised down by 26,000 from 199,000 down to 173,000. So that's 71,000 jobs lower than previously reported. But that's from October and November. And now here we are, first week in January, reporting on December. It's buried at the bottom and nobody pays attention to that. So who can you trust? Well, you can look at what some of the biggest CEOs of all the major corporations in the U.S. are saying. Now, currently, those CEOs are very nervous. But those same CEOs who are nervous today when surveyed about the future, when the Fed starts cutting rates, they will turn around and be just as excited as ever. And that will happen. But for now, they're looking at a bunch of commercial debt that they've got coming due. You see, when the Fed cut rates down to zero for so long, corporations looked at this and said, even if we don't need to borrow money, we should go borrow money and we can put it to work somewhere else and we can make money on that free money. It was essentially free money. They were It was a printing press for these major corporations. But now that's coming due, as well as a lot of commercial real estate loans. You see, real estate loans on commercial properties are typically only three to five years. So all these properties that were financed at extremely low next to nothing rates are now going to have to be refinanced at current high rates. And that's something that we're already starting to see where many companies are simply turning back the keys to the property and letting them go into default. These same CEOs, when surveyed today, see major layoffs coming. AI is changing the job market. And I recently saw a survey of top Fortune 500 companies saying that one in three CEOs see a reduction of 30% in their labor force. Now, again, this is not doom and gloom. New jobs will be created in new sectors. For example, how many people do you know who own a smartphone? Well, everybody, Mike. But how many people did you know who were making or selling smartphones prior to 2007? Zero. The iPhone launched in 2007. That's only 17 years ago. And look at the amount of jobs that were created as a result. My point is that while millions of jobs will be eliminated, millions more will be created. But this won't happen overnight, and it will cause the economy to slow. Why? Well, the reality is you can only hide the truth for so long. Unemployment, inflation, unaffordable living with rising rents, as well as home prices, and rates too high to qualify to buy. But none of those are even the biggest trigger that will force the Fed's hand. One of the biggest reasons we just mentioned was corporate debt, which is the result of cheap borrowing for nearly a decade. But the biggest reason? U.S. debt. 
we can't afford the interest payments on $34 trillion. Just five years ago, the national debt was $22.7 trillion, and the cost for government to borrow was less than 2%. Today, the U.S. national debt is $34 trillion. That's over 50% higher in just five years. And the cost to borrow is greater than 4%. Five years ago, the market rate to finance just the interest on the debt was $227 billion. And as shocking as that is, today, interest on the debt would be over $1.36 trillion. $1.36 trillion just to cover the interest for this year on the debt. We can't afford that. Therefore, rates will come down. So the bottom line on rates here is with all the inflationary news that is still coming through the market and is affecting the markets, the Fed doesn't have reason to pull the trigger yet. But as soon as they start seeing signs of weakness, the stock market dropping, defaults on corporate debt, slowdown in consumer spending, that is when you're going to see the Fed start to hit the gas pedal. And when they do, they're going to hit it hard. They'll have no choice. Now, I've been predicting the timing on this for nearly two years, and I've told people all along that when it does, there's at least an 80% chance that we're going to see mortgage rates go below where they were two years ago. That's below the 3% mark. Do a Google search right now. You can even pause this video for a second to do it and ask the following question. Will mortgage rates ever go below 3% again? You'll have to look really hard to find someone who will say that they'll even go below 5% again. So remember, you heard it here first. Mortgage rates will go below 5% with a 75% chance of that happening prior to the November elections and a 99% chance of that happening within the next two years. As for rates below 3%, while the timeline isn't as clear on that yet, it could be anywhere between the next one to five years. Now, if you go back to January of 22, just two years ago, when mortgage rates were just a hair above 3%, I accurately predicted that rates would go above 7 And at the same time, I said that after that, eventually there was an 80% chance of rates going down below 3%. While most so-called experts are saying that we'll never see mortgage rates below 3% ever again, I'm actually raising the probability to greater than 90% of seeing rates below 3% within the next one to five years. Our government is spending too much money. There's a lack of leadership in Washington. The real risk, if there is any, is hyperinflation, but most likely we're going to suffer through a period of stagflation. That's where the economy is stagnant and there's still inflationary pressures going on. Now, depending on which party ends up in power after the November elections, that could change things. But two things that it won't change are the fact that housing prices are going up and interest rates will be going down. So what's the best plan of action? Well, in the current environment, especially if we see stagflation or hyperinflation, you want to own hard assets. You want to own silver, gold, and real estate. You can't live in gold and silver so make sure you have the home that you want to live in, whether you have to be a first-time home buyer to buy that home, or if you know that you're going to soon outgrow your current home, now is the time to be making that move up. And a bright note to the borrowing, other than the fact that interest rates will go down and you will be able to refinance, is that because of inflation, you'll be paying it off with cheaper dollars. Now, you may be wondering, what's the best way to pay off your mortgage? Call me, because if you qualify, there is potentially a way for you to lower your cost of interest today that can save you literally tens, if not even hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the size of your current mortgage. And it's far easier than you may think. So if your current rate is above 4%, you owe it to yourself to check it out. It may not be for you, but at least you'll know if it's an option. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Mike, uh, you sound pretty certain. What if you're wrong? It's the ultimate hedge. If by chance I'm wrong, if the world should go to hell in a handbasket, then none of it will really matter because the entire world as we know it will be completely foobarred. That's a technical term that you'll need to look up in the Urban Dictionary. But again, I'm an optimist, and historically I've been extremely accurate on my market forecasts and predictions. So to summarize, 
own real estate. It's going to skyrocket this year and in the years to come. Inflation will allow you to pay it off with cheaper dollars. Interest rates will go much lower than people are predicting, but you can start to lower your cost of interest today, so call or text me. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe, and share. And let me give you a huge reason to hit the subscribe and notification button. This video is already way too long, and I've only touched on the highlights of what will happen. I'll continue to provide short updates throughout the year, but if you're the type that wants more information, keep an eye out for a deeper dive video that I'll title White Rabbit, where I will lead you down the rabbit hole to get to the foundational truths behind the economy. Until then, stay warm and thanks for watching.